It's the end of the world as we know it, with zombies almost everywhere and lawless bandits everywhere else. Luckily, we're a part of a group of trained military personnel. But will that be enough to help us avoid getting our brains munched, our bodies kidnapped, or our hope lost? Well, let's see if we can sneak, stab, and shoot our way to safety as we learn how to beat Zombie Diaries 2. The film opens on a mother and father along with their daughter celebrating her birthday and recording the ceremony. Unfortunately, the little girl doesn't seem too happy, even using her birthday wish just hoping the lights come back on and that she doesn't have to continue staying away from doors and windows all the time. Seems we're already in the midst of the zombie outbreak at this point. That makes sense with this being the second movie and all. The parents hear a noise from outside and the husband wants to go investigate it despite his wife's protesting. Using the camera's light to guide his way, he heads down towards the river where they heard some sort of splashing sound. Soon enough though, the wife loses track of her husband and he doesn't respond to any calls. She probably would still be out there looking for him, if not for a scream from their daughter back at the house which causes her to turn back and run to help. Thankfully the little one is unharmed, for now anyway, and is simply hiding under the bed. The mom sits there with her in fear, as the noises they hear downstairs increases. Shuffling sounds, footsteps, and raspy moans. Yep, that's some classic undead sounds. Zombies are for sure in the house right now. But I'm sure after all this time spent going through the apocalypse, this family has safety plans and defensive measures in place to be ready for just such an occasion. Or not, they could just get eaten I guess. We now move to the present day where it's revealed that the footage we just saw was discovered by a group of military personnel and was added to the overall documentary being filmed currently by a man named Jonesy. It's been four months since the initial outbreak and he wanted to start recording their experience for posterity. Not a bad thing to do as long as it doesn't distract from the dangers at hand or use up extra resources needlessly. Jonesy is part of a platoon in England, made up entirely of people in the army reserve who were drafted in during this crisis. Thankfully, they're in a fairly well-protected base, have a decent water source and generators for power. They only go into town to scavenge for food and other minor supplies and possibly help any survivors. Unfortunately, towns are getting much worse, with more undead appearing each visit. It's to the point now that they've had two casualties within a week. As if that wasn't dour enough, we next see the infirmary where they bring any discovered survivors into. Most are already infected and going to turn soon, while others are just too injured and sick for the limited supplies and equipment to patch up fully. Surprised to see the only doctor on duty doesn't wear his mask and a face shield as well. Even if the zombie virus couldn't be spread that way somehow, which it usually can though, there is definitely a risk for something foul to be potentially spread that I would want to avoid picking up through bloodborne barriers. Especially if I was one of the last healers in the area. So yeah, things are tough, but they just need to be strong enough to endure and survive. Long enough for things to start getting better at least. I mean, at least they have the secure shelter to help them outlast the calamity. Will might have spoken too soon as apparently later that night someone forgets to close and lock up the gates properly and zombies make their way in. They sound an obnoxiously loud siren to warn the base that surly invite all other zombies in the immediate area and engage with assault weapons until they need to fall back for safety. Inside the base isn't looking much better however. Not sure if it was outside zombies getting in or if one of the patients turned and got loose. But either way, the infirmary is a bloodbath and the docks days are over. The few remaining survivors are gathering all the supplies they can and preparing to bug out of there. But before leaving, Jonesy goes back to save a mentally traumatized patient he saw earlier named Leanne. After getting some pushback for this decision, the corporal finally agrees to help for as long as she's not a liability to the group. As they gather into the escape vehicle, a soldier named Nicholson is seen running away from the group, claiming he'll draw the Zeds away to help everyone else escape. There goes a true hero, one who they attempt to rescue by looking for them while driving off, but are unable to find him in time. Unfortunate. So the only surviving members who escaped are the deeply disturbed Leanne, Corporal Maddox, soldiers Kane and Carter, and of course the cameraman Jonesy. The group arrives at an old recon area that should be safe for the night, or safe enough at least, and is well known by all the soldiers for any other potential survivors from the base to meet up at. They don't exactly have a key to the place however so they kick the door down to get in. Doesn't exactly help to keep the place secure and shouldn't have been their first choice for entry but hey at least they're inside. After securing the place and filling their stomachs a bit for energy, Maddox explains the current course of action. 
Apparently, they have been receiving messages at the base recently from Hope's Point on the East Coast, where they all originally thought no one could have survived. But according to the messages, there's a fairly large community of survivors there and in Holland. So the current plan is to use the country roads to make their way through the forest, avoiding the zombie-infested towns and make their way to the coast. Everyone seems to be on board with this plan, that is, except for Carter, who suggests they go north to Manchester instead to look for surviving family members. However, he's quickly reminded by the others that not only should there be no survivors up there, but that soldiers there are hated even more than the Walking Dead are for their past actions. What are those past actions exactly? Well, it's never flat out stated, but we get to see plenty of clips interwoven in this documentary that show it. The soldiers followed strict orders to separate families and immediately execute anyone who showed even the slightest sign of infection. A horribly inhuman way to treat an outbreak, and as we can see from the state of current events, wasn't even successful at preventing its spread anyway. Yeah, I can see why they might be hated around there. My vote is on the coast plan. But for now, they rest. Jonesy wakes in the middle of the night and checks on Carter, who is on guard duty for the night. He reports zombies being directly outside the building, but they haven't yet discovered their group and are hopefully just passing by. Before they can all relax though, a sound is heard from the basement and they head down to investigate. Uh, they did thoroughly check this place out before settling in for the night, right? Well, I guess not, as three carnivorous corpses are found down there and they choose not to engage in order to avoid drawing additional attention from those outside. Instead, they run back upstairs and tell everyone else they need to leave. They all rush to the truck and head off, but don't get very far unfortunately, as a cadaver has somehow gotten itself wedged into the wheels. They can't exactly take the time to remove it as the other nearby creatures close in, so they instead hightail it through the nearby woods. Well, things are going to hell real fast. Let's review and see if there was any way to salvage these situations. First off, for the opening scene, don't bother to check outside. You have doors locked and keep away from windows for a reason. No need to investigate any strange sound. Best case scenario, it could be someone you help, but much more likely it's just some undead or even a living person waiting to rob us of our supplies. Stay indoors where it's safe. And if zombies are making it inside, lock and barricade the bedroom door as quietly as possible, or initiate an escape plan we should already have established. If this family had even the slightest of survival instincts, they wouldn't have ended up as man-witches that night. Now back to the main characters, I'm not sure how the zombies got in in the first place. You'd think they'd have a few people on the critical job of making sure the gate is closed. But regardless of how it was opened, that siren alarm isn't helping much. A quieter interior alarm is good for making sure people are awake, but blaring that same sound outside is just attracting every Zed in the area. Which yes, could be considered a moot point once they start using guns, but still. A smarter idea for the base, however, would be to have traps already established. Plenty of punji pit traps around the area, or heck, even a full-blown moat around the base or its fence, could stop plenty of zombies before they even get to the building. This is just some ideas for a defensive measure that could and should have been in place, and sure traps take time and resources to build and maintain, but it would be worth it in the long run to keep the only known safe location from getting overrun. Thankfully, they do have a second place to fall back to. Unfortunately, they didn't think to clear it out fully. I know they're tired from dealing with events that night, but that's no excuse to skimp on safety measures. And once they did discover the undead dwelling within the basement, they should have just taken them out with melee weapons or other close quarter combat techniques. That way, they don't have to run from their second location while still tired from narrowly escaping the first. Fortunately, they could just return in the morning, unjam the truck tires, and be back on their way again. But the group's leader doesn't choose this idea, and instead wants to just continue huffing it on foot. So, let's see how that works out for them. The first thing the corporal discovers in the morning is a butchered zombie. It looks like someone didn't just end it, but took their time tearing it apart. This leads them to believing dangerous people could be in the area, and they keep this between themselves to not worry the rest of the group. Uh, I think that's something that everyone should be informed about so they can be prepared for it. Why keep this a secret? And hopefully it's the best case scenario and this zombie butchering psycho is actually on their side and just really enjoys their work. 
So they take stock of supplies, get water refills upstream from the dead body they find floating in it, and continue through the woods on foot. Maddox specifically says he doesn't want to go into town for another vehicle since it could be too dangerous, and with their limited ammo and numbers, I have to agree with that line of thought. After a bit of trekking, they stumble upon a tripwire. At least somebody knows how to set traps for the undead, and the group believe it's probably bandits. Oh, that means the traps are also there to potentially capture humans in order to rob them of supplies. Well, I don't advocate for that tactic, but I can understand these desperate times, bringing out the coldest and cruelest in people. Further down the path we get to see now only people like that, but also the crazies that happen to make it through pandemic, as we see the bandits base and spot them trying to have some fun with a brain biter. Their leader puts a stop to this though. Thank goodness. Last thing we need at this time is a new strain of STZs. The soldiers avoid conflict at this time to preserve supplies and prevent casualties, and instead just head back into the forest and continue on their way to the coast. Maddox still wants to take the most direct route through the woods, but the others point out that they should take the long way around to avoid bandit territory. That's when their leader reveals to them that there is a time limit to this mission. Apparently, the camp they're heading to is expecting rescue boats to arrive in two days' time that will take the survivors to safety out of the country. This means they have to hurry to catch those escape vehicles, or they will be left for dead. He also tells the team not to say anything to Carter for fear that he will attempt to find his family instead of trying to escape with the group. Man, just how many secrets is this guy keeping and what else isn't he telling everyone? Well, let's just hope they can still make it in time. So because they're doing this most direct route strategy, they need to run through a group of Zeds in the forest. To do so more smoothly, they give Leanne a weapon as well for protection. Uh, do you think that's wise? I mean, she did say she knows how to shoot at least, but she's also the least mentally stable of the group, not to mention the least trained for these situations. Well, thankfully it works out well, as she proves to be a bit of a badass when the gang run and gun their way through the horde. They eventually fight their way through, and after a while make it to a good open area for surveilling their surroundings, so they make camp there for the night. Looking at the map, they realize they're close to the coast and can even hit up a nearby village for last chance supplies if they need to. After sitting around the fire for a while and getting to know each other, Leanne heads out to use the bathroom. However, her trip takes a bit longer than expected, and she doesn't respond when they call. Something has gone horribly wrong, so they charge through the trees after her, and sure enough, they find her. She's being held captive by those bandits we saw earlier who apparently followed and found them out here. They want to use her now for their happy fun time, but our soldiers aren't going to let that happen, of course, and open fire. Several bandits are taken out and Leanne is retrieved, but Carter gets hit. To make matters worse, the firefight has attracted some unwanted guests. Everyone else is able to outrun the horde, but poor Carter is in critical red health, and therefore can't limp away fast enough to avoid becoming brain food. Rest in peace. After grieving their loss a bit, they press on through the woods and arrive at a nearby village, where they decide to look for a vehicle, if possible, and to just bolt out if things get hairy. I agree. With the bandits so close on their trail, and the deadline before the ship set sail growing ever closer, I can see why they would want to risk getting faster transportation again. The zombies now act a bit weird at this part of the movie. I'm not sure if the cold is affecting them, or if they just heavily rely on sight and sound and can't find our heroes moving stealthily through the night, but either way, the team is able to get past them with relative ease. Of course, that doesn't last forever, and they eventually make a run for it to the nearest truck they see. While I know a quick escape is crucial for survival, so are safety protocols, such as making sure the vehicle you're trying to take doesn't have hostels inside it. Always check that back seat. At least Maddox is able to get away, but they couldn't get the truck to work, and with the undead army closing in, they flee the area and just continue their journey on foot. Just outside of town, they find evidence of bandit territory in the form of scarecrows. They attempt to counter any potential threats by splitting up and taking turns covering each other. A nice strategy in theory, but one that proves not to work at all, and leads to Kane getting her leg shot. Think you all should have just stuck together for maximum coverage and protection. They hide out in a nearby barn to recover, but unfortunately are soon found there by the bandits, who take everyone captive. 
I guess one of their crew members was super interested in filmography though, as he continues recording with Jonesy's camera. Good thing too, at least for us as viewers, or the documentary wouldn't have continued and we wouldn't get to watch the rest of the film. The crooks don't want to kill the soldiers, at least not yet, and instead want to toy with and torture them. For starters, they have their youngest recruit, Billy, come over and attack Maddox as a form of initiation into the group. Next, they take him to Kane to have him learn how the birds and the bees work, despite the young lads protesting. After threats of abandoning him to the walking dead outside though, and shouting instructions of violence, Billy finally snaps and ends the woman's life with severe acupuncture 37 times in the chest. But hey, he passed, and is now officially abandoned. This victory is short-lived, however, as a scuffle is heard in the next room. As the band of thieves goes to investigate it, they discover another soldier has found their small operation, and he puts a stop to it permanently. It's Nicholson! The guy from before who seemingly sacrificed himself by distracting the zombies so their truck could get away. Glad he survived and had been heading to the coast like everyone else. Even he admits it was mostly luck that he caught up with and found them in their time of need. If only he could have gotten there just a bit sooner to have saved Kane as well though. Could any of this have been avoided in the first place? Let's take a look. They did discover the bandits before being discovered themselves. This gives us a choice, either move on and do nothing like they did in the film, or take out the bandits with the element of surprise that we have. Both have risks and moral complications, but ultimately I think it would have been better to take out the threats while they could. This does risk their own members' safety in the ensuing battle and uses up limited ammo supplies, but it also stops a potential threat from coming back to bite you later, like it does to the soldiers in the film. Plus, after taking out the thieves, we can take their supply stash for ourselves and hopefully get out of there before any Zeds show up. The only other real issue with this plan is its coldness, as one could argue we are no better than the bandits we're taking out by doing this sneaky and murderous tactic. But to ensure my team's safety, I'd follow Han Solo's lead and shoot first. Especially if we have had prior experience with bandits showing no mercy, so we know they're a problem we don't want to just ignore and hope doesn't bother us the rest of the mission, like they do when they kidnap Leanne and injure Carter. Speaking of which, Leanne should have never been kidnapped in the first place, because she shouldn't have been walking a mile away to go to the bathroom. This is the zombie apocalypse, where it is crucial for survival that we stick together, Lose some of that shame and pee where others can see you. There are more important things at stake than your modesty, like your life, for example. And while we're on the topic of Leanne, why did they give her a gun? Sure, she claims she can shoot, but she was also mentally unstable just a few nights ago. On top of that, I think the trained soldier Jonesy would be more trustworthy with the firearm. Why not give her the camera for a bit and give the trained military operative something he can do some real shooting? The gang now bury Kane, a sweet sentiment, but one they really don't have time for, especially since Maddox reveals yet another secret he's been keeping from the group. Once the ships have left shore, the government is enacting something called Operation Inferno to eradicate the zombie threat. Don't know exactly what that is, but it likely won't be survivable if they aren't in a bomb shelter. So even if they wanted to make the most of it in the apocalypse, it seems they won't have a chance to. It's do or die and they need to get to those boats. Thankfully, they're super close now as they soon come upon the coastside military base. It looks like it's seen better days as corpses are scattered around the yard. And inside, there's just as many dead. Thankfully though, none of them seem to be undead. They explore around but find no one. So the plan is to head to the beach and prepare for extraction. Nicholas doesn't think so though and claims they should just hold this bunker down if everyone else is dead. So the group separate, with Jonesy and Maddox heading to the shore. I sure hope that help will arrive there. Heh, <laughs> sorry, bad joke. At the beach, a signal fires are left burning on the sand and Maddox continues to stoke them with the hopes that they will be seen by boats sometime between tonight and tomorrow morning. Jonesy doesn't think so though and instead heads back to the bunker for safety. Guess he only went there so the audience could see what happened to Maddox. Alrighty. Back at the bunker now, they head underground for safety from whatever inferno might be coming the next day. Unfortunately, the tunnels are loaded with Zeds. Seems this is where the large settlement of survivors were hiding out previously. Now they've turned this safe haven into a death trap. Nicholson and Leanne fight for survival to the bitter end, but are ultimately overrun, with Jonesy opting to take the quick way out himself putting an end to our documentary. But not quite an end to the film just yet as we cut back over to Maddox on the beach. 
he finds a couple that just arrived from a drop-off ship, originating from Holland. Apparently, they were told the UK was a safety zone, and the boats were bringing people here, not picking anyone up as the rest of Europe is overrun. Oof. Not sure how the wires got crossed in the messages, but yeah, things aren't looking so great. And on that bleak note, the movie ends. Anything else they could have done? Well, they couldn't have known the escape vehicle information as wrong. I too would have tried to signal the boats at the beach, only to find out the hard way that the boats were instead dropping off. At which point I would try to take back the shelter and survive the incoming inferno. So whether first choice or fallback plan, they could have kept the bunker safe and survived there. Just like with the recon shelter they found before, they should have fully explored the bunker to make sure it was secure. Upon discovering the undead inside, they could have enacted some ways of getting them all out and resecuring the tunnels. Wouldn't be easy or safe, but could be possible. A simple sound distraction made with sirens or a car horn held down far away outside, followed by them opening the bunker doors and making a run for it could lead to all the zombies walking out on their own. Afterwards, if unseen, they just sneak back into the base. Problem solved. Other than that, the only other zombie apocalypse tactic I have to suggest is to not off yourself if bitten. There is always a chance you could be immune, and discovering that may even lead to the cure. Sure, that's unlikely, but there is still a chance. Even so, I'd rather go down swinging and taking out as many of those things as possible, with the very unlikely chance of being saved or immune, than to just end it all with 100% certainty of not being saved. This movie may have been a bit dark with its ending, but that's because fighting doesn't always guarantee a reward equal to our efforts. However, we don't fight for a reward alone, we fight for that chance. Because not trying guarantees we fail, where trying brings us an opportunity for success. So what kind of survivor are you? One who robs from others and takes themselves out, or one that fights to the very end and stokes the flames of hope to be a beacon in the night? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching guys, binge another one and peace out.